Okay, so Remake is about to take a fat L, as it is worse than Resident Evil Zero, but hey, we'll get to that when we get to that. Okay, that might be a little harsh, but coming off the heels of Resident Evil Zero, it's a huge step back. It's now back to the 96 game's story, with slightly better writing and admittedly way better voice acting. I think the main problem is they were trying to be way too faithful with their remake. Like, the stories just feel very weak to me, and there wasn't a whole lot of story going on either, at least in terms of cutscenes and character interactions. It felt like they were just remaking the first game straight up, when they could have really added so much more to the story to make it more engaging and interesting. And yes, I do know about the Lisa Trevor story, of course I would, I platinumed the game. The difference there is that the Lisa Trevor story is an entirely new story shoved into the plot, and although it is the best part, that's why, because it's the only thing not strictly adhering to the original game. After all, Resident Evil 2's remake changed around some stuff, but one of the things that made that game shine so much is that they worked off the original by making it more engaging with better writing, voice acting, and obviously better cutscenes, while not strictly adhering to the plot, but rather just making sure to have all of the beats of the story in the original. Freeze! Who are you? What are you doing here? Hold your fire! I'm a human! I thought you were one of them. What's going on in this town? Hold on. I don't have a clue. By the time I noticed something was wrong, the entire city was infested with zombies. Gonna hurt you. I said don't move. I'm just passing through. I'm gonna ask you to lower that weapon. I kill you are. You gotta turn around and go right back out the way you came in. Emma? Sweetheart, I told you to stay put. Daddy. Daddy's here. Okay. <laughs> what they did to us. You're a cop. You're supposed to know something. How did this happen? Huh? Mommy. I was sleeping, honey. Okay. And I'm gonna put you to bed too, okay? Emma. Just go. Just give us some privacy. It's one thing to keep the truth from me, but why him? They could have done something like that, making sure to cover all the bases the original did while also improving the overall story by having more interactions and story elements, but they really just remade the original story, and made it slightly more believable because now it's slightly less cheesy. I think a good example would be the Jill sandwich line. In the original, when Jill is stuck in a room that's about to crush her, Barry comes last second to help you out. When you're saved, he says this infamous line. That was too close. You were almost a Jill sandwich. Now, in the remake, the same scene happens, and he says this. That was a close one. A second late, 
You would have fit nicely into a sandwich. What I'm getting at is that they just reworded the original line to sound a bit better, rather than just scrapping it, replacing it, or whatever. Fans of the original are probably happy they didn't, but I'm someone who wasn't even into the Resident Evil franchise until maybe around 2017, so I prefer when they actually make a good, interesting, and engaging story, rather than reworking a line that was already really cheesy just so they can send the nostalgia meters flying off. Don't get me wrong, I enjoy the story for what it was, but I can't help but think they could have done it a whole lot better, just simply by not doing it word for word, at least for starters. So with the story being quite disappointing, why don't we move on to the gameplay and why it's not fun. Hyperbole aside, fixed camera angles just ain't it, Chief. I had quite a lot of fun with Resident Evil Zero, and I did with this entry into the series as well, although to a much lesser degree. And I think it's because it long outstays its welcome, as well as doing the same thing over and over again for the Platinum. I mean, Resident Evil Zero would probably have you play through its main campaign a maximum of four times if you don't count Wesker Mode, which I don't because Wesker Mode is a fun additional thing that actually adds to replaying the story. But now you're basically a god. At minimum, though, you could probably end up playing it once for the Platinum, you know, if you're really good and you know what you're doing. A realistic minimum would be twice, once to learn the layout and best strats and twice to actually speedrun it. I don't even know how many times I played through the main campaign of the remake to platinum it, but it had to have been at least 8 times if not more. So yeah, it's literally at least double the amount of times I had to play through the story in Resident Evil Zero. You could say I could cut that down, and I mean I could if I did everything as perfect as I wanted to, I could probably cut it down to a minimum of 4, which is still a big yikes. The minimum amount of times you'd have to play the campaign to platinum it is around the maximum amount of times you'd need to for Resident Evil Zero's Platinum. This is one of the reasons I don't platinum many games. They end up giving you so many achievements, it just ends up feeling like busy work. This is also why I usually am cool with platinuming Resident Evil games, because I love them and the achievements actually feel like a challenge rather than an achievement. They overdid it way too hard on this one though. There are so many achievements to wade through that you end up exhausted by this game once you complete them all. Especially since Resident Evil games are all about learning the strats and best routes through many situations in the games, but by the time you are done with your second playthrough, you have mostly memorized everything. So now it's just running through the same mansion over and over and over and over and over again for the next achievement. By the time I completed the final achievement, I was so happy to move on because I was so tired of seeing this mansion eight times over. The reason I said that fixed camera angles ain't it is specifically because of this. What makes it more annoying to run through the game so many times is the fact that fixed camera angles are just a thing of the past, and you can feel how dated this gameplay is oozing through the TV. I was so ready to move on to Resident Evil 2 and 3 remakes because that's the Resident Evil style I love. I actually almost gave up on getting all the achievements at one point because there were so many and I could feel how long it would take by simply just looking at the achievements. But after thinking about it for like a day, I ended up powering through it. Now that I'm finally done getting all the achievements, I probably won't revisit this game for a long time because there are just way better Resident Evil experiences out there. I haven't even gotten to the side games you unlock for beating the story. Hint hint, they aren't good. You unlock two different modes, real survival and invisible enemy. You probably are literally dead from playing through the campaign so many times, and so you are probably thinking, yay, I at least now get something new. Sit back down, Mr. Skeleton. You must stay dead. Real Survival is a mode where they said, let's take what makes Resident Evil so good and rip it out. XD. In this mode, you play through the campaign... Again, but now the item boxes are not connected to each other. So remember when I talked about how innovative and cool the system of dropping items was in Resident Evil Zero? Well now take that idea and smash it together with the item box and hooray! Now you've got that system except you are now limited to dropping items off at very specific and far apart areas on the map. Resident Evil 1 backtracking, I sleep. Resident Evil Zero backtracking? Real shit. Resident Evil 1 real survival mode backtracking? <laughs> the 
This mode is just the perfect culmination of what getting all the achievements means. This mode isn't fun, it's just tedious. Like, oh, yay, I left the key item all the way over there. Now I gotta go get it and bring it back. How exciting. Not to mention this game mode doesn't allow any unlockables, and it is on hard difficulty, meaning no infinite ammo weapons, just the weapons you pick up throughout the map. So now you gotta juggle all your weapons and key items all across the map and back again like a circus clown, giving me a brain aneurysm because I don't know who ever thought this was a good mode. This is the complete opposite of Wesker Mode and Leech Hunter. Wesker Mode gives the player more power so they can just have fun destroying everything, and Leech Hunter is one single location in the entire campaign, and so it mixes up the things you previously knew about the area to keep you on your toes and make it more challenging. Real survival is just a question of how tedious can they make it. Then there is Invisible Enemy, which is kinda the same difference, except the item boxes are now connected. No, the change here is that all the enemies in the entire game are now invisible. I'll at least give them this, most of the bosses are able to be seen in a specific way, like the snake's venom seeping out of its mouth, or the breath of the crimson head elder. It's just a pointless mode once again, made to be just kind of annoying. I'll at least give them credit that you can also choose your difficulty on this one and thank god I barely beat this one on flipping very easy. If it was on hard by default and I couldn't change it, this mode would have been a true nightmare. It just sucks that the creativity for the mini games that most Resident Evil games have just wasn't even existent here. Although, it was really nice to get a thank you note from Shinji himself that's quite detailed and lengthy after beating all of the extra modes and difficulties. Not gonna lie, that was pretty cool. I think there were other things that weren't executed very well, like the crimson heads and burning the zombie bodies. Like, I didn't even know that I could burn zombie bodies in my first playthrough, so that was poorly explained, and after I found out, I still didn't because the crimson heads were honestly the least of my worries. They would barely ever even get close to killing me. The crimson and heads are not that spooky and in fact were hyped up way too much. The leech man is way more terrifying in Resident Evil Zero because he is beefy, always shows up right in your path of progress, and can be genuinely pretty difficult to take out effectively, while also being much harder to dodge or run past. Also, the evil within did the burning enemies' bodies idea way better anyways. I feel as though people hyped up how great remake is too much, and now I'm just left kinda disappointed. It's basically the original game with better graphics and gameplay, although it is still fixed camera angles, so better to a certain degree, and of course the Lisa Trevor story. The combination of me not being a huge fan of fixed camera angle games such as the old Resident Evils, the game almost being a shot for shot remake, not being innovative enough, and having to play the campaign at least 8 times over just to platinum it, really just turned it into a very mild installment in the franchise and a huge letdown for me, especially after the high that was Resident Evil. Zero. I would give it a lukewarm 6 out of 10. Just don't do the achievements.